Okay, so we've talked about schedules. And again, I want to add something that I should have said in the schedule video, which is that playing with your kids is a very important part of the schedule with toys at their level. Um, I'll do a video on different levels of play so that you can get some ideas of what I mean by their level of play. Um, and I'll send you some information about the levels of play as well. Um, and board games, board games, board games, board games, simple games, matching games, anything with turn taking. You can do a puzzle as turn taking. But um, all of those social skills are so, so important. And that's part of what they're missing right now while they're at home are all those lessons we do with them on how to play, how to play with peers. So the more play-based stuff you can do, the absolute better it is for your kiddo. Um, but keep in mind, when you're working on something that is a deficit, a core deficit for your kiddo, you want to remember to get that token board and that reinforcement like we were talking about. So we talked about schedule. We talked um, about what the word reinforcement means. Um, and then we talked about how to use that to your advantage while you're working with your child. Um, and I brought up the token board and how you can use the token board, the different values that you can give to a token. Um, and some of that, as we said, is going to be really individual, how it goes and what you need to do with those rates with which you are delivering the tokens for the big payout. Um, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is weight. Um, weight is a really important concept and it can be very difficult for our kiddos. And if you're at home and you're having to do things for yourself, I imagine that you're having to say weight. And um, what you can do is download, if you have Apple products, the weight pyramid app. Um, some of you we sent home with a weight card. You can also make your own. Just make an oval shaped sign and write the word W-A-I-T. If you want to color it orange, that's even better. That's the color of the one they use at school. Every time we tell a child to wait, we hand this weight card to them. I think about it like when you go to a restaurant and the girl says, oh, you're going to have to wait X amount of time, and they give you those little buzzers that buzz when it's your turn, and you feel better about life because you have this thing that you're holding on to that reminds you that you're waiting and that when you are done waiting, this thing is going to tell you that. That's what these wait cards do for us. Um, they are something that your kiddo can hold on to. It's sort of like another contract for them. I'm not saying no to this thing. I'm just saying it can't happen right this moment. Now in the classroom setting when I'm working with your children on weight, I do, um, well, the first steps of weight um, are growing it progressively. So the very, 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 very first time I tell a kiddo to wait, well, let's, let's break this down even further. Let's talk about two different scenarios. Let's talk about a weight in which your child has requested something and you're telling them to wait. In that scenario, they have something they very much want, so the motivation is on your side. That's what we always want to think about is do you have their motivation and are you in control of that motivation? Because that's how you're going to get what you want out of anybody in life is if you have their motivation. So kiddo comes to you and says on the device, bacon, or brings you a pex for bacon, or comes up and uses their words, bacon, I want bacon, can I have bacon? Doesn't matter how it's said. They come up and they ask for something. Let's just say for funsies, um, the bacon's already cooked, but you want to work on weight. You're smart mom, smart dad, smart girlfriend, boyfriend, smart fiance, smart grandfather, grandmother, all, all the people at home. And you've already planned this lesson and you don't need to cook the bacon. You really just want to work on weight. You're going to say wait. Hand them the card. The second you hand it to them, you take it right back and you give them the bacon. They waited for about half a second and they were successful and then they got what they wanted. So that's how I started in the classroom with every single child that I get. It's half a second the very first time. 
The next time I ask them to wait, I'm going to hand them the card and wait one second. Oh, nice job waiting. Hand it back to them and keep slowly building it. This is called shaping, and it's a very effective learning technique because we're not teaching a brand new behavior. We're just making slow changes that are so small our learner doesn't realize that the requirements are changing, so they never have a chance to have problem behaviors. So they wait one second successfully. Next time it's two seconds. Then it's three seconds. Then it's four seconds. Then it's five seconds. And you keep growing it. And every time they get this experience of being successful and then getting the desired item and the requirement is changing so little that there's really not a lot of room for them to have errors in this. And then you just keep growing it. And once you get to about two minutes of waiting, you can let them have a neutral item. A book um, is usually a good one to hold on to while they're waiting. Um, but let's back up. Let's talk about what happens if you don't have a planned scenario, you didn't already make the bacon, and you actually have to have them wait two and a half minutes. Give them the wait card. Give them a neutral item while they're waiting. If they have a meltdown, ignore them. You can point to the card and let them know you're waiting. You can let them know their option of playing with a book. Um, and then you can just lay back and wait for the time to be up and then let them have it because you don't need to negotiate. This is the time period. It's unfortunate, but this is reality. It's how long it takes for bacon to cook. Um, any extra engagement with them, a lot of conversation and bargaining and attention to it can then create a new behavior of like, wow, that was such cool attention I got from mom or dad um, or whoever when I did that. So I, it's not even about waiting anymore. I'm just going to throw tantrums because people just talk to me and they hug me and they look at me and, and I love that. So I'm going to do that. So you really want to avoid that. So if the scenario is you haven't planned this lesson, so you can't slowly grow the weight, um, give them the item because you know it's a longer wait, and then try not to give them a lot of attention if they have a meltdown. Now, when you're growing it in these planned lessons, if you want to try this, if they are unsuccessful, so let's say you're growing it, you're at six seconds, it was five seconds last time they did great, now you're asking them to wait six seconds for the bacon, and they throw a tantrum, bah! and they keep repeatedly asking you for it. Um, this is an unsuccessful trial, so at the end of the six seconds, they will not receive the thing they were waiting for. And you can let them know, I'm so sorry, buddy. We have to have a calm body while we're waiting. We can try again later. And then go ahead and move on with your life and do something else. Expect a meltdown. It's okay. Make sure they're safe. But be neutral. Wait for them to get themselves together. Move on and do something else. When you're ready to come back to the next wait trial later, because this isn't the end. We don't give up. He, he lost it. She lost it at six seconds. So I'm done teaching wait. No, what we know is we need to go back to where they were last successful and try again building. So at five seconds they did great. So the next time you do a wait trial go back to five seconds. Um, they're successful. Yay! You did so good. Now you get to have your bacon. I love that calm body. I love that waiting. That's how we get to have things we want. And then maybe five and a half seconds the next time. And then try six seconds. And if you get to six seconds, oh, that was amazing. That's how we wait. And really pile on the praise paired with the thing that they're waiting for. Um, so those are our planned lessons for things that they want. Now, if they need to wait for something else, this happens a lot in the classroom. We're all lining up to go somewhere. We're waiting for the rest of our friends to finish in the bathroom. So we're waiting but we're not necessarily waiting for something really fun to happen. We're just in a wait. Um, you can grow it the exact same way. Um, leave the bathroom or leave your kiddo in a chair and say you have to go to the bathroom. Do it for one second, come right back. Two seconds, come right back. Um, keep building that. Um, maybe you guys are going to go for a walk. So you're waiting for somebody else to join you. Have them stand at the door and wait. If you want to do a planned scenario, 
then have the person they're waiting for pop up after one second, then two seconds, then three seconds. If you find yourself in these situations for real, um, again, use that wait card. And if it's going to be an extended period of time, especially if you don't have control over the time period. See, the difference in these planned lessons is I have full control over how long it's going to take for the wait interval because I've already set it up so that I can give it whatever it is to them as soon as I'm ready to give it to them. If these are real scenarios, you know, I always think about like, you go to the grocery store. That's not the place to teach your first wait lesson to your kiddo. Why? Because you have no idea how long that wait period is going to be and you have no control over it. So you want to build those skills up while you can control it before you move to those real life situations where you can't control it. Um, and they get that history of, but she gives me, or he gives me the wait card and I usually get the things that I want when I wait. So then when those unexpected, longer, uncontrolled situations come up, you're going to get much better behavior out of your kiddo. So these practice trials at home are primo for setting the stage for the unplanned times. But let's just say while you're home, because reality is reality, and we're home and all these scenarios are popping up, that a uh, wait time comes up in which you don't have control over how long it's going to be, or you know it's going to be a while, way more than your teaching trial. Give that wait card, give that neutral item that they can hold on to while they're waiting, praise them intermittently, especially if you don't have control over the time period, right? Um, just keep praising every 20, 30 seconds. I love that waiting body. I love how you're calm. You're holding your wait card. You're standing still. You've got a calm voice. You've got a calm body. Look at you. That's how we wait. And you can just keep sprinkling that in until that period ends. Um, and then huge, 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 huge celebration when they're done waiting and they've done it appropriately. Um, if they're not waiting for something fun, if they're waiting to go, um, I don't know, into the bathroom. Their sibling was in the bathroom and they were waiting for the bathroom. You know, you can also give them an extra thing. Here's a gummy, here's a pretzel, here's a whatever um, at the end of their wait period along with your praise. Let me know if you have questions on this one.